Revolution. <laughs> What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to dive into my top three baits for the month of March. You guys know I'm going to ultimately put a whole bunch of tackle out here. We got a lot of tackle to choose from, but I'm going to try to make this a little bit easier for y'all. And I'm going to sort of have, I'm going to pick three, but I'm going to try to help you guys out in certain parts of the country because there is so much going on right now. So many things transitioning. We are having a huge warming trend. Also getting ready for the first PPT event of the season down on Sam Rayburn. Some things are changing. Anyway, before we get into that, real quick here, friends at Magellan have, I wear this shirt all the time. It's a sun shirt. It's the Realtree Wave pattern. They have really killed it this year. Just got it in. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm going to drop a link right here in actually a comment right below. So for any of you guys wanting to grab some snacks, some of this gear, click that link. This is actually a medium. So I'm a 200 pound dude. This is a medium. So they go a little bit large. Anyway, so back to the video, dialing in what we are going to throw in March. This one was hard for me because like my biggest thing is, is there's so many different things going on. And so this is what we're going to do, like middle of the United States, I'm going to say like, I'm going to say more so like, you know, down south, you're probably like Tennessee, Kentucky, a lot of these areas, we are still major pre-spawn. Now, some of you guys down in Florida and Texas, South Texas, they might be starting to spawn a little bit, but still, there's still a ton ton of pre-spawn fish around the country. So first bait I'm going to pick in last week, I did not, or last month, I did not pick this bait. It was definitely high on my list, but I did not choose it. And somebody called me out for it. So I'm going to show you guys real quick here with this jerk bait. More specifically, this is the 13 Fishing Loco Specials, shallow and deep. Now I have these guys right here. Bam, this is the deep guy right here. And then this guy is the shallow. This is actually... Why would I say jerk baits? Obviously, you guys saw what went down. If you haven't, Red Crest, my boy DC, won the tournament throwing a jerk bait. Now, I ended up finishing third. Pretty solid finish. I'm very happy for the start of the year. And I was throwing a deeper diving jerk bait and a shallow. Now, these are both loco specials. Um, this one right here, like Casper Shad, it's a really pretty color for that clear water. This one's called Natty Light, which is pretty color for sure. The thing about this jerk bait, real quick here, for any of you guys that snagged this particular jerk bait, make sure, um, so one thing I do is they will come in the waters like 50 degrees-ish, they will slow rise, okay? So you're gonna probably wanna swap the center hook out with something a little bit bigger. So this is actually, I think a size, a short chink size four. You might wanna go with a regular size four or like a regular size five if it's a little bit thicker gauge wire. Okay, so the other thing is, so I was fishing this deeper one in a little bit deeper water, six to 10 feet of water. It's actually will go about seven foot deep. And this one will run about three to five, okay? So the jerk bait is just, the, it can be the deal. I mean, it can, it really can be the deal all over the country for the whole year. But we tend, March is probably the best month to throw a jerk bait in my opinion, because you've got so many fish staging up and getting ready to spawn, secondary points, um, little lead-in banks, like little bluffy banks on highland reservoirs where those bluff walls start to transition where it goes to a 45 degree bank. Those are the places that I'm gonna look for them. Or on the main lake where those big swings and those channels come up next to there and they start to transition into a big flat or maybe a big spawning flat. So think about that. That's two things, a couple different things that I'm looking for. Look for grass, great for fishing around brush, all of those things. A jerk bait's a major player. Um, as far as rod, reel, line, you guys, ultimately anything from a 6.6 to about a seven foot medium action is what I prefer. 12 pound fluorocarbon works well for me. And then I actually go with a higher gear ratio as far as reel. When I reel down and set the hook, I like to have a little bit more, a little bit higher gear ratio. So anyway, jerk bait is definitely a loco special. There's a ton of jerk baits out there. Um, I mean, shoot, there's so many different ones. Ultimately, you have to choose the right one for the application you're dealing with. And I've even thrown super small jerk baits too. That actually can be a deal if those fish are being a little finicky. You might try that. It's a little downsize, the jerk bait can work as well. Okay, next, I, and I, this is one, 
I was thinking about it a little bit, and I have this rod right here, uh, and this, a jig. A jig is, I don't care where you go in the country right now, and as long as the ice is off, a jig, green pumpkin jig, half ounce, I can fish him shallow, I can fish him deep, I can fish him everywhere in between. And now this one right here actually has, this is like a green pumpkin jig, half ounce with a bandito bug on the back, blue baby. Y'all know I just I just love blue baby. Blue baby is my favorite color in the bandito bug. I love the action of that bait and it's still pretty subtle. So, so for some of those that really like um, a lot of action in their jig trailers, right now is not the time. So I cut off all the sides of the appendages and this guy sometimes, even if the water's really cold, I will actually keep the appendages together on the trailer of the bandito bug and what i'll end up doing actually so some of you guys using that bandito bug i'll what i tend to do is if i'm like flipping or whatever all season long i'll keep some of those baits in a little compartment and i'll sort of save them and then i'll cut them in half and i'll have them as jig trailers so you can sort of like one you'll end up using them flipping but then ultimately later on you'll be able to use those for jig trailers as well so sort of a quick little tip that works well for me now as far as line size i'm going to throw 17. um this is also going to be really good 17 pound fluorocarbon 7.3 heavy 8.3 to 1 gear ratio is what i prefer the what i'm where i'm going to be looking for these a lot of these fish is i'm looking for them to start to move in now some of you all down south even further south a lot of these fish are actually pulling up and i'm gonna cheat a little bit because i know i said only three but i'm gonna cheat a little bit because ultimately if i if i feel like the fish are spawning or getting ready or very close to spawning i'm gonna texas rig a bandito bug by itself that is there's a transition there when the fish go from pre-spawn winter to pre-spawn pre-spawn to spawn in that transition where a soft plastic is the only way to go in my opinion. Now you can still catch them on a swim jig, it's weird. I can still catch this fish on a swim jig, but it's way better to use a soft plastic on like a 5 16 ounce weight. It just like seems like the best weight for me. I'm just telling y'all when they're spawning, quarter, 5 16 a little bit lighter. Peg that sucker, flip them in there, got him. So if your fish are getting close to spawning, you might just try the bandito bug by himself. If you are still in that transition from winter to pre-spawn, that jig right there is gonna be your buddy. And then also look for the areas, Highland Reservoirs, look for those same things as steeper banks. If you're on the Tennessee River, bluffy banks, you can flip a jig really well. Boat docks, these fish are gonna start pre-spawning on boat docks. They're gonna start pre-spawning on rocky, even like 45 degree banks, I'll still flip the wood. That's what I'll start to pay attention to. Either I'm looking for bluffy banks, or steeper banks, or I'm looking for some sort of cover those fish are gonna to start to set up on. Whether it's wood, whether it's a dock, or if it's a brush pile. They love brush piles this time of year. They tend to, especially when it's close to the bank. So look for those, that's definitely a key. Now, what was the last one I was thinking about? Okay, all right, so last, last, last video, February, I talked about a spinnerbait, which is definitely one that I love. But you guys might be able to guess this one, it catches, it's caught more bass since it's been invented since, I mean, like about anything, probably better than Alabama rig. A vibrating jig is what my last selection is going to be just because a vibrating jig catches them really good. All right, now, this is the thing. I have a jackhammer right here. I throw a couple different ones. Do you need to spend $20 on a, on a vibrating jig? Ah. I don't think you do. There's, Z-Man makes a few of them that are a little bit, I would say they're still pretty solid um, and you don't have to worry about that. So I wouldn't necessarily, you, if you're trying to do like fishing on a budget, ba budget, bass fishing on a budget, you don't necessarily have to have this particular deal right here. Now, this is the thing. Ultimately, I'm gonna fish these on the flatter area. So same place I'm gonna be throwing a lipless crankbait, same place that I might be throwing uh, a spinner bait. Uh, this vibrating jig is what I'm going to throw. Now, you could throw different trailers. Any sort of shad kind of trailer will work. I tend to go with two different colors. One being a black and blue, and the other being a chartreuse and white. That is what works for me in the stained water. Now, if the water's clearing up, I'll use the, that more of a green pumpkin-y look. That's what's worked for me over the years. If the water's clean, green pumpkin. And if the water's really, really cold, like sub 48 below that, then eh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Okay, so the chatterbait, vibrating jig, definitely a go-to. So for some of my folks up in the northern states that are just getting a little bit, 
just finally getting out there. I'm gonna throw one more in there for you. I know I said three, but it's gonna be a swim bait. Single swim bait, three inch, if I had my preference, a three inch Largo Shad. You guys know I love that bait a lot. If you have a bigger bait for the four inch, slow roll that on a quarter ounce head. You're good to go. Hopefully you guys learned a bit of it, a little bit from this video. We always have fun doing this, you know. And then one more thing I'm gonna actually gonna talk to you guys about real quick. I know a few people asked me and they've been all wondering, okay, Jacob, what's the deal? You started with the you started with the ghost. Now you have an all treks on your boat. You might see me swap back to the ghost. The reason was behind this, and I'm gonna tell you guys, the reason for that was actually because like when we decided, when we knew we were going to go to Redcrest and we were going to go to uh, Palestine, the water was really cold. And I figured that forward facing sonar would play quite a bit and I figured not very many bites were going to be had. So being able to see one fish on that forward facing sonar or maybe catching that fish might be the difference of winning the tournament or not, making the cut or not. So the one thing that Lorance has, that Ghost has, it's phenomenal is it has a lot of power. It, it, it's definitely quieter, but the one thing that they're still working on, it doesn't have a head that turns, so it's like eh, eh, eh. So it gives you a, a guaranteed direction of where your particular transducer is pointed. So that was the only thing that I was like, I, I didn't know how I didn't know how accurate I could be. Now I know the old tricks, I've used it a lot, um, but I didn't want to chance it where I didn't, if I didn't guess the correct cast, and we're talking about catching three or four bass a day, um, I, I wanted to make sure I could make the best cast I possibly could. So that was what it was. Um, do I think it's a big deal all the time? Nope. I'm more than likely here really soon. I'm going to just swap that, that all tracks to the ghost, back to the ghost. And you'll see that on the videos, but I wanted to sort of talk to you. I mean, not everybody asked me that, but that was the reason why I did that. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I have some packing to do for Sam Rayburn, which I think a lot of these fish will actually be up there spawning. Pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post a little bit of it all. I really appreciate y'all following along. Hey, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you already haven't, and drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys want to see. We truly appreciate every view, every like, all that good stuff. We will see you next time.